Welcome back to Anxiety Slayer. I'm Shan Vanderleek, here with my sweet friend and co-host, Ananga Sevier. This week on the podcast, we're responding to a listener question from our private Facebook group. I just want to say how much I enjoy your podcast. Your wisdom and overall energy is so powerful. I've had anxiety for many years, and recently, I've been having lots of panic over the things I hear in the news, such as aliens, solar flares, basically anything world-ending causes me to have massive panic attacks. I would really appreciate it if you could talk about this. Talk about a, a potent listener question. And who doesn't feel like this on occasion, right, Ananga? Yeah, I certainly used to feel like this when I was a teenager and young adult. First of all, I'd like to say thank you so much for your kind words and such a great question. And yes, when I was young, I used to be really scared of these things. I'd spend hours going over them and worrying. When I was a teen, I'd go and huddle up in my room and feel very anxious and quite scared, actually. And I grew up in a home where the news was on every evening, like clockwork at six o'clock. Everyone had to be quiet and it had come blaring into the house and it really disturbed me. As you bring that up, it makes me think of a time, I was a young teenager, maybe 14 or 15, where I was absolutely certain that the world was going to end. There was some talk about all kinds of madness in the world ending back then. And, and, you know, as I've grown up now, I see there are times in history where, remember Y2K and all these different things where things were going to be horrible and final. And I remember, like it was yesterday, going into my mom's room as a teen and climbing into her bed and, and crying and telling her I was absolutely sure that we were done for. And it was because of the propaganda, the news, the rhetoric, however you want to label that. And my young mind latched onto it. Mm. And I remember being so grateful that I had a mom to tell me that everything was going to be okay and that 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 was not the truth. And um, I don't remember what happened from there, but I suspect she probably made me some food or as mothers do Mm -hmm. (laughs) to feel better. But, uh, and, and now I think that was so long ago. And in today's world, there's so much more coming at us, even more than that uh, 6 p.m. appointment for news. It's all the time, 24-7. Yeah, I was thinking about that as I read this question. And also now, right at our fingertips, we have the opportunity to check. And when we're anxious, we tend to check. We want reassurance. So, you know, when it's the 6 o'clock news and then it comes around again at 9 o'clock. But now, yeah, it's everywhere. And I'm talking about a kid growing up in the 60s, 70s, into the 80s as a teen. You couldn't go and keep looking. Right. The news would roll around again and say the same old stuff. But even as dire as it often was and as distressing as it often was, it was a scheduled show with a set amount of time. Right. So now we have, as you just said, so much more coming at us constantly. And when the mind's anxious and it goes to look at things on Google or wherever for reassurance, and we know with health anxiety and so many different kinds of anxiety, what we tend to do is cause ourselves more anxiety. And that's why it's so key that we share some things that will help and some things that you can do if you're feeling like it's all too much, all of this news and all of this doom and gloom and the first thing you can do is give yourself a break from it. Give yourself a break from screens and from the news and go a little bit more internal and really care for yourself and your family and your space and your work and not be in that space of opening to all of this other data and all of this other energy that doesn't serve you well. Yeah, that's what helped me when I was younger, was to nourish the internal. First of all, reading information that I found really hopeful and inspiring, reading and information with a different worldview. 
reading the Bhagavad Gita, reading different Vedic texts. I would read all kinds of interesting things, anything other than what seemed like what was coming out of the news. I remember traveling in London to an old bookstore, it's still there, called Watkins Books. It was like a kind of mystical bookstore, big place, really cool building. And I'd go in my lunch hour and just stand in front of the shelves and look, look for reading that made me feel less anxious, more hopeful, more settled, expansive, inspiring reading. That really helped me. That's such a good choice to make, too, and and to remember that you do have choice. Because what we know about the news is the sole purpose is to create ratings and to sell things. And how do they do that? Well, they have to shock us, don't they? Mm -hmm. They have to scare us. They have to do things that make you feel compelled to watch, even if it's uncomfortable. And my goodness, just paying attention to what's been happening, even beyond this question, because this question came in probably a month or two months ago. And since then, what has happened with the weather patterns and the floods and the losses of life and the fire in Maui, and you're just kind of dumbfounded by all of it. Yeah, it can make us feel really helpless. I've been avoidant of the news for years. I came away from it years ago. And then during COVID, I started checking the news, checking the numbers, checking the areas, checking in on loved ones. And then that became a a habit again. And now I'm on a news fast on my uh, habit tracker of all the good things I do for myself every day. There is the one do not do habit, and that is do not look at the news. I've been running that for a, a few months and it's helped. If information needs to come to me, it will come to me. It's one of the best choices that we can make is to just leave it. Mm-hmm. And I like there. there are a couple of um, articles that you mention in our show notes about one is called Stop Reading the News by Ralph DeBelli, and the other is You Are What You Read by Jody Jackson. And I think the uh, piece from Jody is really important because we've kind of covered the information that's a part of Ralph's piece, but Jody says that food is to the body what information is to the mind. The information that we imbibe will turn into emotions, thoughts, actions, and behaviors. And the consequences are less visible, but just as potent. And that just it just surmises it perfectly, doesn't it? Yeah. These are both books. Stop reading the news and you are what you read are, are books on the topic of what we're taking in. And I read them both. And I read them both when I wanted to really cut back on my media consumption. They both make excellent points. Uh, Ralph DeBailey talks a lot about how much time we lose to the news. It's not a big book, slim book, but um, he makes some really great points. And Jody Jackson, you are what you read, making this excellent point that the information we, we imbibe will turn into our emotions, thoughts, actions, and behaviors. And of course, Ayurveda says this too. And we often talk when we're sharing information on Ayurveda about nourishing our mind and supporting and protecting our nervous system. And Ayurveda teaches that the mind needs nutrition, which again is where I benefit from reading wisdom texts. And Ayurveda says that the news is like junk food. It gives us mental heartburn and it gives us indigestion. And we need nourishment for our mind. We need reading that inspires us, keeps our mind well fed with good things to think over and good things to talk about. The challenge with negative news is it really gets into our head and then you find in the quiet moments of your day it's there running it's a running dialogue and we start to chew it over and feel anxious about it and i find that good reading inspirational reading is a really healthy antidote to that because you can switch over when you notice your mind turning over things that you worry about you can ask yourself is this helpful no and then come over, what did I read that was really interesting? What was that thing I was reading earlier that made me feel, you know, some hope? Mm -hmm. Let me remember that and reflect over that. So it becomes a 
a practice, a self-nourishing practice to come away from those thoughts. I also like to do the excess statement, interesting point of view, I have that point of view when something pops into my head, whether that be something, the, the fear that I might be creating, the dread I might be creating. And this can apply to anything. It doesn't have to be just about what's happening in the world, but what happens when our minds judge something harshly or when we are in this really uncomfortable place of suffering, we can say, interesting point of view, I have that point of view, and repeat that a few times and then switch things up because we always need to switch things up or we get stuck in that loop. Yeah, question and switch. And what Ayurveda has to say on fearing the worst is that when the mind has an excess of air or the air element, it feels churned up and ungrounded, so very vata-like, when vata is out of balance. And we experience overthinking and anxiety, and our mind easily falls into this worst-case scenario thinking. And if we stay with that constant negative what-if fears, if we're in that loop, all of those challenges and things that are coming up seem so much bigger than they really are. That mountain that's made from the molehill. Yeah. Thankfully, we can build peace and resilience in the mind and feel a lot more settled and grounded. And we cover this in depth in our brand new course, Seven Keys to Calming Anxiety with Ayurveda. You can find that at the Anxiety Slayer Academy at anxietyslayer.teachable.com. We want to help you build as much peace and resilience as we possibly can. And Ananga, you brought up something that um, that made me chuckle at first when I was looking at the notes this morning. Stephen Covey, Circle of Concern or the Circle of Influence. I used to teach it. I used to stand in front of groups of people and teach it. Did you? From Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, which is from the Wayback File. Yeah. That book came out a long time ago, but what a phenomenal book and a helpful teaching. Yeah. When were you teaching? Uh, well, back when I was still in the television advertising business, so before I left that part of my life. So at least 15 years ago, maybe 20. Uh huh. Maybe more. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't remember the published date, but I remember that book doing the rounds with um, my friends and I. It was a classic. <laughs> it's still a classic, really. It's still there. It's still out there. Yeah. But this teaching helped me so much with uh, anxiety about the news. And I feel we should say it's not that we're saying these things aren't concerning. True. The things mentioned in this question, we're not just saying, oh, don't watch it and it'll all go away. For me, dealing with this kind of fear and having experienced it very strongly myself for quite a chunk of my earlier years, for me, it was about building peace of mind and resilience and finding a way to deal with it. So not to belittle those concerns, but to focus on making our mind stronger, more peaceful, more resilient, so that we can more peacefully handle whatever information or challenge comes our way. So the teaching is, and if you go on Google, you can find diagrams of this for a bit of visual information. And we also have a link in the show notes that will take you right to a PDF that you can download that will be really useful. Oh, great. So the teaching is shown as two circles, one inside the other. The outside circle holds the things we're concerned about, like the things we hear in the news, conflict, environmental concerns, aliens, economic worries, all the things that come at us from the media, big worrying things, but things that we can't really do anything about. They're not in our home, they're not in our locality. So the big things that are coming in that we worry about go in the outside circle, which is the circle of concern. And in the center, in the inside circle, is our area of influence, the things we can do something about. For example, our actions, behavior, taking care of our mental and physical health, choosing what information we take in and how we spend our time. And when we're overwhelmed by the circle of concern, 
It means it has more power over us. It's pushing in. It becomes the bigger circle and it's pushing in on us and constricting us and increasing our anxiety. And we might feel helpless if that grows too much. But when we bring our attention to the circle of influence and take action to develop that, we begin to gain some hope and some breathing space. And as we continue working with the things we can do something about, our circle of influence grows and it pushes out against the circle of concern. We gain some ground. In a nutshell, focus on what you can control instead of what is outside of your control. Yeah. If you boil it down, that's really what we're talking about. How can you make a difference internally and within your own home and within your own community and not be a slave of the next news story, but to be in the space of how can I show up today and best care for myself and my family and my community? What are the small steps that I can take that will make a difference here versus swimming in this sea of information and worry and doom that just makes you feel so flipping helpless? Mm. And so I did find a, a website with a downloadable PDF that you'll find in our show notes, and I recommend that you download it. And then it's a helpful exercise to draw your own diagram as well, and then fill in the things you're worried about, but can't change. That goes in that outside circle. And then the things that you can do something about go on the inside circle. So it's what you can control and what you can't control or what's outside of your control. And that visual is so incredibly helpful. And you can come back to that space of, of knowing that you don't have to have everything else figured out. You don't have to have that circle of concern weighing on you all the time when you're focusing on your circle of influence, what it is that you can do to feel better, to help others, to be in a space where you can be more calm and relaxed and grounded. Yeah. I find it really helpful to draw it out and put things that are beyond my control, list them out. It's another way of getting things out of your head onto the page that's always helpful. You could even do a journaling practice around it and then draw the diagram out. And then uh, leave room in that inside circle to focus on the steps you can take, the things you can do something about, and to help yourself focus in on that area of influence. And as we often share, any step counts. It doesn't matter if it feels like a small step. It's your small step. And Every action that's positive that helps you pushes back a bit more on the outside influence. Mm. And there are several things that you can do to start feeling more calm and at peace when all of this crazy business is coming at you. And I want to start by sharing something that I think is important. If you are in a household where you cannot escape the news, you're a younger person or if your partner or however it is that that news comes on, please get some noise canceling headsets. If you have to be in the room or if you are in a smallish environment and you don't want to have it come in, just put those on, listen to some music, read something, move to another space. I do it. I do that in my own house sometimes. My husband wants to turn on the news. And I want to still be in the space with him. My eyes go off the screen. I am listening to something or reading something. Uh, well, always listening so I don't have to hear it. And it's been really helpful. And then the obvious things. Of avoid the source of anxiety. If it's the news, take a break from the news. If it's uh, a friend who likes to spew all kinds of negativity, you need to take a break from them as well on occasion. We always recommend that you avoid stimulants like caffeine that can increase your heart rate and provoke anxiety. And I'd also add alcohol there because even though you might feel like a drink will calm and relax you, once your body starts to process the alcohol, it will kick you into more of an anxious place while the body is metabolizing the alcohol. 
and start using calming practices daily to help you feel more settled and present. We share so many of these practices with you. Pick something that appeals to you, whether it be a guided breathing practice, a body scan, visualization, it might be Qigong or restorative yoga. As you know, we have several guided practices with relaxing music available as well. That's available on our Patreon. There's so many choices that you have to bring more calm and relaxation into your life. Yeah, I think that guided practices are a great antidote because you're switching out from one form of media, in a sense, to another. You're you're listening to something helpful, calming, something that's going to help you feel better. Sometimes when we feel really anxious due to incoming information, we need that little bit of extra support and having something else to follow can really help. Thank you so much for listening to Anxiety Slayer. We're grateful that you come back again and again. Ananga, thank you for another wonderful conversation. And again, thanks to our listener who sent that question in. We invite you to take a look at our brand new Ayurveda course. It's called Seven Keys to Calming Anxiety with Ayurveda. And it's an introduction to the healing wisdom of Ayurveda for soothing stress and anxiety. You can explore the course today at anxietyslayer.teachable.com.